Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It's time for our underlever shoot-off video between the two giants in the spring world, which are the HW97 and the TX200. Now, a couple of things we'll say off the bat. Number one, you can probably tell neither one of these rifles are brand new. There's a good reason for that. Number one, to be honest, being that I couldn't get a new one in time for the video. However, the other point being that, to be fair, you're going to get a much better idea as to what the guns are capable of when they're run in with a used gun compared to a brand new gun. One thing I will say is I have had both guns apart and had a look and there are no tuning kits or anything like that on the go with either gun, so it is a completely fair scenario. The other thing I'll say is we are using the tactical or synthetic version of the HW97 because sadly the only wooden stock one that we have at the moment is a Samwell Field Sports version and it does have a target claw on the rear of the butt pad which I'm going to rule out and say would be an unfair potential advantage. So we have gone for the tactical version of the 97 which to be brutally honest is my favourite version anyway. So again I won't be biased but I will say that here and now. So, we are going to be extra harsh on both guns. It's only fair as we do the same on our budget air gun reviews and such like that. And we're not going to have a cop out and say both guns are as good as each other. We are going to find a victor out of these two, even if it's going to potentially take me a long time to do it. So, let's crack on with the face-off and let's see what features you get with your money. You can feel the friction coming off both of them right now, can't you? Okay, so features. We will start with the Air Arms TX200. We'll keep it a little snappy, as you'll probably know we've not long done a review on one of these. So as we start off at the rear of the gun, you can see the ventilated butt pad, which is quite nice and very flash looking, it must be said. As we move further along, you'll see this is a right-handed cheek pieced rifle. And you can see the sculpturing going on in the grip is really rather lovely, it must be said. And just in front of that, you can also see the checkering built into the grip itself. We'll talk a bit more about that when we get to the handling section. As we come up and through, you can also see the automatic safety. It's a very similar design on this and on the HW97, but we'll see how it all comes together a bit more when we get to the handling section. As we get to the trigger, this is Air Arms' very, very famous and for good reason CD unit found on the TX. We have had a little play with this when we did the TX review on its own. Um, there was a little bit of creep in the second stage. We've had a little play with that leading up to um, this face-off video. And you'll see we've transformed it quite a bit. It's something really rather special going on with this, but we'll see more on the handling section. As we move further along, we do have the anti-bear trap mechanism release button. Bit of a polarizing thing this, you either love it or you hate it. We'll see how we get on a bit later on and how the cocking compares to the HW97. And a bit further up, we also have the checkering on the forestock of the TX, which again, really nicely finished, just like on the grip. As we come slightly higher, you'll also see the sliding breech mechanism here which again, nice bit of kit, same as what you get on the HW97. There are little differences with it. For instance, if you have a look, this is more of sort of like a side loading sliding breech, whereas the 97, as you'll see in a moment, is more of a over the top, the complete action is essentially cut out for you to load your pellet in there. We'll see how that works in the handling section. And finally, further along still, you can see this is obviously an underlever cocking rifle. No buttons or anything needs need to be pushed here. It is literally just a case of grab the lever and pull it down. As the saying goes that I quite like, keep it simple, stupid. Okay, so the HW97, how does this do for features? Well, as with the TX, we start off at the rear of the rifle. As you can see, you also, of course, get a butt pad with this. There's a lot less flair going on with the 97's butt pad. Dare I say it, it's much more German. Um, not so many frills on the go, no sort of nice little ventilated bits in there. It's literally a strip of rubber, although nicely finished and textured at the rear as well. It's a strip of rubber to keep your shoulder comfortable and that's pretty much as far as it goes with this one. 
Now with the HW97, you do get, at least with the synthetic we're looking at here, you do get an ambidextrous cheek piece. It is quite nice, the cheek piece on this. Obviously, we'll talk more about it when we get to the handling section. Um, I've personally always found it pretty comfortable. I do have a 97 of my own. Um, and to be fair, it's quite nice. I will say it's not as pronounced as what you get on the TX. I think the TX is maybe going to be a lot better off if you're into your target shooting. You're going to use high amounts and such like that. Whereas the 97s, the comb is a little bit lower if you take a look at sort of the way they're made and constructed and shaped. Next up, we move on to the thumb hole area, which this, as you can clearly see, does things differently to the TX. Thumb hole stocks are a little bit polarizing. You either love them or hate them again. I'm personally a pretty big fan of them. I've always found this stock to be pretty comfortable, but again, it will not suit everybody out there. You do get a bit of stippling around the grip, which is quite nice. Personally, I would rather have the TX's checkering. I will say that here and now, but again, synthetic stock is more of a working gun than anything else. And again, horses for courses. Some may prefer this to maybe the checkering on the TX. As we move further along, you also have the pretty darn legendary record trigger unit, often regarded as the single greatest trigger unit ever fitted to a spring gun. We'll find that out a bit later on, see if that's true or not. And you can also see the adjustment screw very proudly standing behind the blade itself. So we'll talk a bit more about that when we get to the handling section, but I don't think much needs to be said when it comes to the record. Moving further along still, we get another nice bit of stippling here in two different groups. And as we come slightly further up, you can see the sliding breech mechanism. Hopefully you can also see the difference between this and the TX. The TX more favors the right hand side with the sliding breech essentially, or the breech area almost going into the stock. Whereas the 97 is more centrally mounted, but covers both sides from the top. So again, interesting to see which one we'll find the easiest to load when we move on. As we move slightly further along, we of course get to the Virarc barrel, and we've also got the underlever cocking mechanism underneath. Now, this is slightly different again to the TX200 in the way that whereas the TX you can just grab it and pull it down to cock it, with this you have a release switch just underneath the barrel, as you can hopefully see here. Again, this is something else we need to look at when we get to the handling section to see which one is the most convenient to use. So that's it for the features of the HW97. Much like the TX, it is a lovely spec gun. I will also say that it's interesting how they do things their own sort of separate way. The HW97 has kept things traditional and very, very similar, you could say, to the HW77 that came before it and that we've known and loved for decades. The TX has its own spin on things, which again is a bit interesting, but we'll both see now how that actually feels when they're in the shoulder. So. Let's get both guns, let's have a little play with them, and let's see which one we think is the best. Okay, so the HW97, how does that feel when it's in the shoulder? One thing I will say is it's absolutely sweltering with the heat today, so I apologize if I look more disgusting than usual. Just be glad that you cannot smell me at this moment in time. Don't know about the gun getting an oil down by the time I'm done. I feel like I'm gonna need some oiling right now, but uh, hey ho, let's move on. With this, it's quite nose heavy i will say that most underlevers usually are this one's no exception in fact this is well hang on let's see whoa see that there it's already starting to dip usually i like my rifles more or less balanced centrally back here this is definitely a bit of a heifer on the front end what i will say though is sometimes front heavy guns it can help to absorb the recoil when you're firing and to be fair with you someone who has owned and shot a 97 i can say it is pretty much the same with this that being said it's not perfect it's worth mentioning i don't know if the i'll put it this way i don't think the nose heaviness was necessarily a design choice i think it's more of just something that happened when they put it together but then hey ho what do you know so to unleash the underlever you're going to want to press this button here and then put your thumb between the barrel and the underlever itself and pop it goes pull that down and the rifle is now cocked and you should hopefully be able to see the safety's engaged on this left hand side as well one thing i will say is it definitely gets a little bit heavier in the final stage of the cocking cycle when you're pulling that underlever back but it's not the end of the world if i'm brutally honest so let's chuck a pellet in there and see how easy this is to load with this great big conoscope on top so put that straight through the breech and then with that you don't need to press any buttons or anything just bring it up lock it in place on the end and other than disengaging the auto safety, you're ready to fire. So 
it's quite an easy cocking mechanism. It's a fairly brute or brutish, I should say, rifle, but it is quite easy to manage. So let's switch that off and let's give that trigger a go. Second there. The records really are fantastic, to be honest. Second. No creep, just off it goes, simple as. And very easy to adjust as well. You can see the adjustment screw poking behind the trigger. And you've also got just a little hole there, if you can see that, that you can just get your screwdriver in, have a play with it and set it up the way you want it. One thing I will say, but this goes with all triggers, don't set your trigger too light because it can actually engage itself. All you need to do is switch the safety off and bang, off it goes. So don't go crazy with it, but at the same time, it is a fabulous bit of kit, it really is. One negative I will mention, other than obviously being a bit nose heavy, maybe for some, is that the stippling, you more see it than feel it, to be brutally honest. The stock is nice, make no mistake. I don't think that's really gonna give you any traction when it's a rough weather day, I'll put it that way. And don't be wrong, it's, again, I think it's more looks than anything else. It looks pretty, I will say that, but it is just a little bit, a bit shallow. I wish it was a little bit more maybe, I don't know, aggressive in the way that it was done. But in general, handling wise, it is quite nice. Another thing I will mention though, is the auto safety on these can sometimes be a little finicky. You gotta make sure you have cocked it the whole way to make that jut out, because sometimes it actually won't engage the safety, which is obviously a bit of a concern. That's why on this channel, one of our sayings is Virarch Safety Syndrome or WSS, because it is something they do suffer with, unfortunately. But that said, in general, that is a lovely bit of kit to be honest with you. It's easy to load, even with the big old scope. It's not too bad, the shoulder, bit nose heavy. Trigger's freaking beautiful, nearly cursed then, I won't. Um, and in general, the stock is nice, but little bits could have maybe been a little bit better with it. Right then, so that's the 97. Let's get the TX up here and see if that can improve on the uh, foundations as we put down. Okay, so the TX200, how does this compare to the HW97 and how does it feel in general? Well. It's a different animal, I'll put it that way. Whereas the 97 felt a bit like a Leviathan when you're shouldering it, this is a different monster completely. In comparison, this actually feels quite nice and compact. It's quite pointable, it comes up really nicely. The cheek piece, although not ambidextrous, is gorgeous, I will say that. And the other advantage it definitely has over the 97, or at least the synthetic, you can actually feel the checkering on here. You can genuinely feel that and think to yourself, that's gonna give you grip in the rough conditions and things like that. Balance wise, it's also, depending on how you feel about your spring guns, I'd say marginally better. It's more centrally balanced than what the 97 was. In fact, there you go, you can see it's pretty much just sitting perfectly just like that here and now, whereas the 97 would have been doing this already. It's a better balanced gun. It's probably because of that gonna be a better freestanding shooting gun. Sadly, I am rubbish at that, so we won't be doing that in this video, but I will give it probably props for that one. It's probably better to shoulder in that regard. It's not perfect though, and you're about to see and hear why, and don't worry, we know who you are in the comments. Ah, you can cock that quietly. We'll get to that. Right, to release the underlever, just pull it, and you can hopefully see there, it's unlocked. Keep going, and like I said, bear in mind you're in the bush, you're about to shoot a rabbit, you gotta reload. Oof. I still just think it's unnecessary. There is no need for that to be like that, in fact, the earlier TXs had more notches in there than what this has, so it was more of a clack, 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 clack as you're pulling it back. Cocking effort is quite nice. I'd actually potentially say it's slightly more so than the 97. It needs a little bit more leverage to cock, but it's not uncomfortable or anything like that. And I really like the, the metal sort of grip that you've got on the end here. That's really smart and nicely made. Loading the pellet, however, this is the bit where it's actually gonna claw some points back. Now the 97, has got that big wide sliding breech that covers the entirety of the action. This doesn't, as you've seen earlier, it's just on the right side. However, it actually works to its advantage in this instance. So can you see that the, obviously the breech is open now just in front of the scope there. And obviously it's the exact same scope as what we had on the 97 and I've lined it up as best as I can as what we did on the 97. So as we can hopefully show what we're going on about with this. The breech is yes on the right hand side, but it goes quite low almost into the stock, if you can see that. And what that does with a large scope, it actually makes it easier to load than the 97's breech, which goes completely over the top. Now, what I will say is it is a case of swings and roundabouts because with a shorter scope, the 97 will be 
easier load simply because you can just put your hand in front of it and plop it straight in whereas this you might still fumble with it a little bit getting it in there but with a bigger scope i mean that's just if i can find it there we go that's just straight in just like that but when you put your pellet in you can't just as you can see you can't just bring that under lever back you have to press the release mechanism right here and then you can slide the under lever back up and automatic safety off and then you can finally finally fire so let's have a go at that trigger let's have a listen to twang as well now we have had a play with this trigger since our last review and i will say it is beautiful so second 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 break i'm gonna upset a few people i hinted at this when we did the review of the rifle on its own when adjusted that is a better trigger than the record i know i am despite what i say sometimes i am a little bit of a fire arc fanboy obviously except on this video but it is a better unit however the fire arc is still freaking amazing that record and it's a damn sight easier to set up this thing you've got to take the trigger guard out just to be able to get to all the adjustment screws now i don't have a modern tx to see if they've changed it on that but on this one as you can see that is a solid trigger guard there so you can't get in there and make your adjustments and even if they did put the holes in the trigger guard you still can't get to your final adjustment screw that's hidden back here so you've got to keep taking the guard off maybe even the stock off to adjust shoot stock off just shoot stock off it's just a bit like everything else on this gun a bit unnecessary now for the three people at home who left the comment saying ah you, you, you can cock the tx quietly there's nothing wrong with it it's your problem well you can but it's still the gun's problem i'll show you why right so you're in the bush you want to take your second shot now to cock the gun quietly that anti-bear trap release mechanism there that button you hold that in and then you pull the lever back that and then let go and that is a monumental faff in my opinion because now we've got another button press that we've got to deal with and now we've got to put the pellet in again then after this got to press the button again pull it back oh no in fact it didn't even cock that time do you see what i mean it's just a nuisance pull it back up safety off then we can raise and then oh my god he's gone simple as it's just a nuisance the main flaw with the tx if they could change that cocking mechanism make it a, a quiet system like what the 97's got and dare i say it even some of the chinese underlevers on the market the gun would be practically flawless but it's not it's just too much of a faff and it's totally unnecessary i know i've upset people but my opinion has not changed on that and it probably won't um that being said though it's a fantastic gun it really is and i'm sure over time you can get used to cocking it like that the other thing i will say and we'll do a comparison in a minute so you can actually hear the both of them back to back not a massive amount of twang it's quite quiet like i said there's a wasp trying to get around me now probably they like rotten meat don't they um like i said these guns are both bog standard there's been no adjustments made just give them a bit of a grease up and then that's it they're ready to go uh, there's not really a massive amount of twang out of either one but let's have a little side by side listen now and let's see which one is the noisiest of the pair Okay, so first things first, we're gonna try the 97, put a couple of shots through it so we can listen to the twang and such like that. We've taken the scope off, so there's nothing getting in the way of the action or anything like that. You're gonna get the complete raw sound, shall we say. So let's have a couple of shots. Have a listen. So I'm gonna put you right up to the lapel mic so you can hear that hopefully a bit better. Let's go again. So it's definitely a little bit of twang. It's a bit like a dry cough. Let's have another listen. But it's not too bad at all, to be honest with you. I've definitely had worse Virox. They can have a bit of twang, I will say that. But this one's actually pretty muted. So the two twos definitely seem to behave themselves quite well. Next up, let's have a little play with the TX200 and see what that one's like. Oh, I, I do not like that sound. Reminds me of when you're riding a bicycle and when you're coasting down a hill and you get that clack, 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 clack. Let's see, pop that in. I will say, 
what you might have seen there, I fiddled with that a tiny little bit. It is the 97 loading port is definitely better with a smaller scope or like you can see, no scope at all. But with something big there, this one is better. Right, let's have a little listen. So you're going right up against the microphone. And I don't know if they're about the same, to be honest. I was expecting the TX to be quieter. But to be fair, they both seem to recoil roughly the same. I might say the TX maybe has got a little bit less recoil naturally. Let's give that another go. There's not a great deal of kick and such to either one of them, to be brutally honest. But I think when it comes to twang factor, and obviously each gun's different, so it's a bit of a silly test what we're doing now. I don't know, I think it's an equal tie, to be honest. But we'll play both footage back, and obviously you guys can hear it probably better than what I can right now, because you're literally, your ears are right up against it. And I'm sure you will let me know in the comments. But I'm going to call that a draw at this moment in time. Right then, so let's break down what these are like, and then let's crack out the chronograph and see just what numbers we get. So our handling segment, who do we think came out on top? Well, the TX definitely has its advantages. I find the checkering in the grip and in the four stock is definitely nicer than the stippling on the HW97. Again, might be a little bit of an unfair test because obviously the wooden stock 97 probably has its checkering of its own. But sadly, like I said, we couldn't get our mitts on one. Um, the other thing I'm going to mention is I would say the CD unit is that little bit nicer when set up properly than the record. I know that might upset a few at home. And again, that's not slagging the record at all. I would never, ever, ever do that. But the CD unit is fantastic. That being said, you do have to work with it to make it fantastic, where the Virarc is literally a case of you just get a screwdriver, have a little play with that adjustment screw, and you can set it up to basically be 99.5% of the CD unit of the air arms. To me, the air arm seems like a slightly, at the moment, finer sort of rifle. But unfortunately, in some areas, it's too fine. The cocking mechanism is, again, now I'm getting flagged for this, in my opinion, one of the worst that I've used for an underlever simply because of the hassle involved. There's budget underlevers for £120-ish that come with their own anti-bear trap mechanisms that are quiet and even easier to use than the air arms is. At the price it's at, and I know they've had an increase, but I know they brought out a new TX, maybe they've changed that mechanism, I don't know. It's... I'm not a fan. It just feels clunky to operate. The 97 is a smooth criminal in comparison to that. It's quiet. The only real noise you get is the click when you cock it and return the underlever and that lovely swoosh sound that you get when you return the lever. HW97 and 77 uh, owners will know what I mean when I say that. The safeties are the exact same. Both potentially have their issues from what we can see online um, from user reports and such like that. And in my own experience with the Virarc system, you can occasionally, occasionally get issues. That being said, you can occasionally fumble the cocking of the TX when you try and cock it silently, which the whole thing is a faff to begin with having to do that. As you saw when we was using it then, um, or hopefully you could see, it, the underlever basically wasn't fully cocked and I had to re-engage it to then release it. It's just a faff and it's such a shame as well because the TX has got some real great stuff going for it. Like I say, the trigger's the best on the market. Don't care what anyone says. Um, on top of that, I'd even potentially say there was a bit less recoil with it, and it is better balanced than the 97, which, don't care what anyone says, it's God's honest truth, at least in my opinion. But it's such a faff to load and use, and it's a crying shame, because of simply because of that, I am going to give it to the 97 when it comes to handling. The trigger's every bit as good. It's Like I said, it's 0.1% behind the CD. It's easier to, to adjust to go with it. It still shoulders well. It's a little nose-heavy. The stippling's maybe not as proud as I'd like it to be. But at the end of the day, it is nice. It's not far behind the TX in terms of handling. And the cocking is just so much better. And on top of this, yes, the side sliding breech mechanism on the TX is easier to use with a big scope. It's the truth, try it yourself. People even out there that say the 97's better to use no matter what. It's not. Put a big scope on there and try lighting the, uh, loading the pair back to back like we've done. The TX is easier. But in most applications, again, the, the wide open breech on the 97 is better. The TX is only better with a gigantic scope. With that said, I am giving it to the 97. The 97 draws first blood when it comes to handling, but 
there's still a lot of this review and shoot off left to go with the TX can definitely claw some points back, I know it can. So let's move on now to chronograph testing and see which one gives us the best numbers. Well, that's the chronograph test over and done with, and how do we get on? Well, it's a difficult one to judge, to be honest, as it depends on what you prioritize in a rifle. Do you want maximum power or maximum consistency? The TX had the greater power, with one shot even coming out at 11.8 feet pounds, but at the same time, the spread was literally twice that of a HW97. For me, I prefer consistency over power, so I lean slightly towards the HW97. However, that said, you do also ask the question, when looking at it from a totally neutral perspective, will you even notice a 16 feet per second spread at 45 yards compared to the 8 feet per second of the Virarc? I don't think so. Likewise, will you truly see the difference at range with a 0.2 feet pounds advantage in power? Again, I don't think so. Because of this, I'm inclined to pass this off as a draw, but I'll leave it to you viewers to see which one you'd take. With that said, let's set some targets up and test these two beasts downrange. Okay, so accuracy testing time. We've got the target set up at our 27 yard mark. We're gonna start with the HW97. Sadly, the wind isn't ideal today. Um, we have put the review off or the shoot off off as much as we can, but sadly, this is pretty much the best we've got as of late but we're going to try and shoot around the wind and to also make it extra fair we're going to also do three groups per pellet tin to see which group comes out the best and we'll show the best group on camera obviously i won't show the other two because this review or shoot off is going to go on probably far too long anyway so we don't want to drag it out obviously we're going to do the same with the tx200 as well and we'll see which pellet groups the best per gun and then after that as you know we're going to move it to our 45 yard mark and see who comes out on top so good bit of fun ahead i'm probably going to be here a while today but uh shooting two springers can't complain so then let's move on to accuracy testing
That's 27 yards accuracy testing out of the way, and both rifles put up an incredible showing, with some extremely tight groups barring the occasional flyer. This could be due to the weather or me having an off day. To be honest, I'm still waiting for my on day. Both rifles are almost perfectly equal to each other. With the pellet on test, on average, the 97 seems to be marginally less pellet fussy, but the best group just goes to the TX. I will say the wind was slightly calmer when we were shooting the air arms, but all shots were taken between gusts regardless. Also, can we just appreciate how well the RWS hobby pellets did? We won't be using them at 45 yards, as they do peter out usually beyond 30, but both rifles put out some excellent groups with them. We'll test both rifles now at 45 yards rested and unrested, and see which one comes out on top. To be honest, it's anyone's game at this point. That said, there's some rather large black clouds coming up. I'm sure I won't get wet. Oh, got a bit wet. Now it's time for the 45 yard accuracy testing. The weather is atrocious because of course it is. We'll be shooting between gusts with both rifles and with the TX we'll be using the JSB Jumbos. The 97 will be firing the 16 grain FX pellets. This is the important one. Let's see who comes out on top. Okay, so HW97, 45 yards. Okay, so one thing I will say, it's a obviously different day today. You'll see it's much brighter. Um, when we were shooting the TX, you might have noticed we had the camera facing the target instead of behind it. The reason for that is because we did a couple of groups. As we say, we do three because of the wind. Although it's calmer today, to be fair. Because of the wind, we'll do three groups and get the best one to make it the most fair. Um, it was quite dark. And when we watched the footage back, it was a bit of a struggle to see the pellet impacts from the back. But rest assured, brighter day, HW97, we're going to be doing it as we usually do from behind. So don't take that out of context, please. Uh, there's a sound bite for you. But no, I was going to say, uh, so yeah, 45 yards. Let's see how the 97 does. TX did pretty damn well, even in the wind, which is now, if you can hear that, starting to pick up a little bit. But let's see how she does. That's our 45 yard test over and done with, let's take a look and see how we got on. I think this one could be down to you judges at home as it's difficult to choose between them. The TX had technically a tighter group with all the shots sitting under a 5 pence piece, which considering the weather conditions is fantastic shooting. That said, the Viarark also fought back with a slightly larger group due to one flyer. However, it's considerably neater with its grouping, with three practically going through one hole. It all comes down to whether you think the slightly wayward shot of the HW97 was the wind or me. And I promise I won't get too insulted if you think that. Or maybe the rifle is naturally throwing one shot off. 45 yards is a fair trek after all. It's too close to call, so we're going to do one more test. Both of these rifles aren't just famous for their target shooting prowess. They can also hunt. So we're going to do one last test. 42 yards. Elbows on knees with no rest. Let's see if the HW97 snappier lock time will make the rifle more forgiving to shoot, or if the TX's lazier recoil wins the day unsupported. One little disclaimer, and one thing I will mention. If you notice the TX's first shot going off, 
That was actually intentional, as the target had slipped slightly away from the backstop. The first pellet hole is my aim point. Right, time to switch the scope and try again. Well, no beating around the bush with this one. I think we can say that at least in this test, the HW97 definitely jumped ahead. The TX still shot well, and we got unfortunate with the wind picking up just as I fired the last shot. But even disregarding that flyer, the HW97 still put down the tighter group, with four shots easily sitting under a five pence piece. My conclusion is that the lazier and slower shot cycle of the TX allows for too much user error on offhand shots, in comparison to the 97. The TX still shot very well, but the German was taking no prisoners today. With that said, let's tally up the points and see which rifle is the winner. Well, when it comes to features, both rifles are well specced, but being underlever air guns, there's only so much you can do to reinvent the wheel. The Virarch, in my opinion, has a vastly superior anti-bear trap mechanism. However, I will say that the TX has a far better finish overall. The metalwork on the TX practically rivals older Webleys, whereas I've always found Virarchs to be lacking. With both rifles in wood form, I'd say I do think the TX is much prettier too, although I do like the sinister appeal of the Synthetic 97. So for features, I think it's fair to call it a draw. Where it isn't a draw, however, is handling. In my opinion, the TX200 feels unnecessarily clunky compared to the HW97 due to that anti-bear trap mechanism. I know I'm beating a dead horse at this point, but it's a serious letdown for the rifle. Air Arms, if you're listening, your Mark IV TX. Please remove the clacking and release button from the side. As far as I'm aware, nobody likes it. The TX does score some points, however, despite what people say, and I'm guilty for this as well. The trigger is better than Virarch's record unit. To me, it's even more crisp, and the setback blade is just perfection. I also find the TX is somewhat less nose-heavy, and it does have a slightly smoother shot cycle with less twang, at least with these two rifles. That said, it just isn't enough. As mentioned, the HW97's trigger is already practically 99% as good as the TX, and it's considerably easier to adjust as you don't need to remove the stock or trigger guard. The 97 may have a smidge more recoil, but it's still miles away from being a harsh-to-shoot rifle, and the faster lock time seems to, if anything, overmatch the TX's smoother shot cycle. It's also considerably easier to load than the TX, unless you're using a massive scope, and you don't need to practically molest the rifle with your hands all over it, just to cock it quietly. There's another lovely image for you. So, for those reasons, I think it's only fair that the German takes handling. Now for the chronograph test, and this one for me is also a tie, but it depends on what you at home think. The Virarch was certainly less powerful than the TX, but it made up for it by being literally twice as consistent. As mentioned earlier, the question is though, would you really notice that marginal increase in power, or the better consistency? Saying the rifle was twice as consistent does sound impressive, but when the TX still only has a spread of 16 feet per second, it's not exactly much. So for me, it's another draw. But again, this is down to you at home. Now for the difficult bit, accuracy. This could go either way depending on how you shoot and what you shoot. I'm going to say that the TX off of the rest was slightly more accurate, or at least easier to shoot than the 97. The as mentioned lazy shot cycle had no real disadvantages off of the rest, whereas the slightly sharper shot cycle of the 97 
did make keeping it under control a little bit more difficult. The thing is though, that rolls completely reversed when the rifle was shot offhand, where all of a sudden the TX became a bit of a diva and demanded that you held it as loosely on the front end as possible. In comparison, the Virarch didn't really care how you held it up front, with groups only opening up when I gripped it like a gorilla off camera, just to see how it responded. Even then, it was more or less a 20 pence group. Now for me, I prefer a springer that's not fussy to shoot, especially when I'm hunting, and I do tend to lean more towards hunting air rifles than target range cabinet queens. Not that the TX can't hunt, of course, and I'm sure with a better shot, the offhand groups could have matched or even beaten the Virarch, but that's the point. It may take a skilled shooter to make the TX an offhand laser beam, whereas the HW can pad the ego of an average Joe like me and give me the confidence to go hunting. Again, this is entirely down to the shooter and what you do, but for me, I genuinely have to give it to the HW97. In the rifle's defence, it also shot very well off the rest, and again, it's not as though 97s are a rare sight during target competitions. This face-off is a difficult one, as on another day, I could choose either gun, but I started this review stating that I wasn't going to cop out and give the political answer of, both rifles are as good as each other. Oh no, I'm painting either a German or a British target on my back before this is done. With that said, right now, the Virarch is the rifle I'd choose, as it's in my opinion a far better hunting rifle in regards to ergonomics and especially offhand downrange. You can't always take a rest with you when you're out looking for Bugs Bunny. The TX absolutely deserves the praise it gets, and I'm sure someone else with a camera will do a video proving me wrong, and I hope that you do. But as of right now, the HW97 is still the king of the modern underlevers, at least in my eyes. Well, until we review the Diana 460 anyways. But on that note, thanks ever so much for being patient. And if you're looking forward to getting your next air gun, make sure to contact us at bigdansairguns.co.uk. As always, thanks ever so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.